All right, good afternoon, and welcome to Finance Executives Planning Through Uncertainty, the latest installment of Business Solution Partners webinar series. Today, we are speaking with Chris Cahill, Executive Vice President of Finance for Unified Enterprises Corp., a company at the forefront of social advertising for the enterprise uh, business. Our topic is planning through uncertainty, and Chris is going to take us behind the scenes to detail how he is leveraging adaptive insights in the current economic climate to make forward-thinking decisions based on modeling and scenario planning. This webinar is brought to you by Business Solution Partners. BSP has a 30-year history of providing high-level financial and operational consulting and technology-based solutions to mid-market and enterprise companies in all 50 states. We're an Adaptive Insights Gold Partner, a five-star Oracle NetSuite solution provider, a HubSpot Gold Partner, and took home the coveted Abbott Exchange Partner of the Year Award in 2019. In addition to these accolades, we hold certifications with many other SaaS solutions to help companies achieve process transformation in finance, sales, operations, marketing, and much more. We represent a wide variety of software and business process solutions supported by training to ensure that your company succeeds in the modern environment. We love sharing educational and informative content with our growing audience, and I personally encourage today's viewers to check out our YouTube channel and our LinkedIn page. Be sure to like and subscribe to receive regular updates, including access to white papers, webinars, blog posts, and more. And we've made it really easy uh, by providing you with some custom links. Just type in our web address, bspny.com, front slash YouTube or front slash LinkedIn to be taken directly to our social pages. My name is Craig Cook. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Business Solution Partners. Our thought leader today is Unified Enterprise Corp's Executive Vice President of Finance, Chris Cahill. You'll also hear from the co-managers of our Adaptive Insights practice, Lynn Jenkins and Chris Adamski. Additionally, we're happy to introduce the newest member of the BS team, Rich De Palma, our Senior Account Executive for the Adaptive Platform. And the woman behind the scenes helping make all of this possible is our Webinar Coordinator and NetSuite Account Manager, Michelle Cronley. On behalf of our entire team assembled here today, welcome to our webinar. A uh, quick shout out to all of our accountants on the call today. Uh, BSP is extremely proud to have expanded our capabilities to offer CPE credits, and we have been approved by the NASBA for web-based training. This is officially our first webinar that has a CPE credit attached, and we've got a lot more content queued up for this year. To comply with the NASBA rules for credit delivery, we uh, will have several, several other polling questions interdispersed throughout today's presentation. If you are a CPA and you're looking to get credit, <clears throat> please be sure to vote in these polls and watch attentively for the entire presentation to be eligible to receive your course certificate. All right, we're ready to get started. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, so today we are talking about finance executives leveraging active planning during times of economic volatility. Active planning is a process designed to help finance teams react quickly to market fluctuations that have an effect on the financial levers of business. And there is no time like the present to contextualize the concept of uncertainty. It's really almost impossible to predict what tidbit in tomorrow's news cycle will send markets careening up or down, when states will open or close to business, and where the next hotspot will flare up. So today, finance executives are doing everything in their power to plan for anything and everything. We need to imagine all of those possibilities from best to worst case scenario and formulate responses for myriad outcomes. This monumental task is critical to the survival and the future success of our American economy. And we know how challenging these times are. So we thank you for taking the time to join us today. Our goal is that by the end of this conversation, we will have pro provided you with some of the information and the inspiration you need to help conquer the financial challenges of today and whatever may come down the pipe in the future. To execute active planning, which includes the all important activities of modeling and scenario planning, finance teams require a modern planning platform. At BSP, we have identified adaptive insights as the platform of choice for our growing client needs. Today's conversation is centered around leveraging this powerful financial solution to achieve flexibility during these rapidly changing times, ultimately leading to better decision making on, on the part of those leaders steering our corporate ships through uncharted waters. We're going to start with an overview of the platform before transitioning over to our guest speaker, who will discuss how he is helping his company weather the storm through active planning. It is my pleasure to introduce the newest member of the BSP team, Senior Account Executive Rich De Palma for an overview of the Adaptive Insights platform. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate that. 
So uh, uh, just a little bit of uh, background on myself. I've been in, been in this space for 15 years, specifically in a core performance management with a large legacy vendor and spent three years at Adaptive Insights before joining BSP. Uh, a little bit about Adaptive, market leader, as you see. I'm told this as of uh, this week that 4,700 customer number is now over 5,000. Uh, it is a it is SaaS based, has always been SaaS, and, and at its core, uh, the reason that Adaptive is so successful, it was designed and architected with finance in mind. The founder is uh, still a, a practicing CFO who was tasked with creating a more collaborative process in planning and built uh, Adaptive to be as flexible and ag agile as needed in, in today's uh, ever-changing world uh, and beyond you know, things aren't going to change so um, the idea behind an active plan is that you need to have a collaborative process more important today where people are remote at home working in their own environments is a way to share uh, goals objectives and the process across the people that are closest to your customers and the operations it should involve all of your drivers all of your numbers all of your metrics in the organization uh, workforce financial operational plans analytics and be continuous not a one and done as we're seeing um, this year specifically the annual report that was excuse me annual plan that was done in december or january and then been put put aside on a shelf has been uh, continuously updated and the, the need it is is to have that to be a continual process and have it to be a connected system that allows everyone to access it from wherever they are in an easy fashion and to do all of your plans actuals uh, reports forecasting reforecasting and, and when we get to the demo you'll see how easy that is to do from that single source of trusted data integrated with uh, all of your data sources so three three important things to remember as you as you see the product and have have a, a chance to take a deep dive on on adaptive it was designed again to be uh, an easy powerful and fast solution what what that means is planning is a team sport everybody plans no longer is it we're going to create a plan that involves sending out an excel spreadsheet to a bunch of people have them populate some cells and send it back to me and then we'll spend weeks consolidating all of those sheets into a master plan and by the time you get that back, it's it's obsolete and it, it needs to be usable uh, by the people who really understand what those numbers means. All of the analysts agree, Adaptive is the by far the, the most easy to use and flexible solution out there. Looks an awful lot like Excel. If you are familiar with Excel and can, and can fill in spread, uh, cells in a spreadsheet, you'll be very successful at, at leveraging the power of, of Adaptive. It is designed to model anything and analyze everything. And it's specifically nowadays, as we see many, many teams reforecasting in real time and wanting the, uh, the ability to integrate uh, planning and analytics into a process that is taking market drivers external to the organization, such as what's going on today uh, with COVID-19 into account into their plans and what that means to specific parts of their business. It needs to be able to, to do that and Adaptive was designed to do that and it's extremely fast uh, and, and provides you the ability to adapt in real time or as often as you need. Again, um, top ranked in terms of time to value and typical implementation, we're talking weeks, week, not months and he really gets you into this solution. I've seen them be from start to finish, a 10 to 12 week, that can be as easy as getting reports out. It is a matter of a few days once the data is into adaptive. A couple of, couple of closing slides before we jump into uh, talking to Chris Scale. Um, but you, need, you need to respond to sudden change with speed and agility. W what does that mean? We know what's going on today. Uh, I'm old enough to remember 2001, 2008, those were those were quite compelling events that that changed the way businesses wanted to plan and model their current and future state. Uh, you you need to have a system that's central that allows people to to act in real time as as market changes are occurring. In, again, Excel has its place. You'll see an awful lot of Excel and Adaptive was built to leverage Excel for what it's good for. You can spend a lot of time in Excel and simply right click and 
and get into adaptive. So there's a there's a very slow learning curve. You'll you'll see that when you see the tool. But you know, Excel was never designed to be a modeling tool, which a lot of people have tried to make it do. You you are you are going to get that single source of the truth that everyone is looking for. Uh, adaptive provides that single source of trusted data. It pulls data from any data source, any anything that um, you're trying to get data from. Uh, general ledger, ERP, any, any type of data system, CRM data, market data, think about real-time data sources that stream in, you could, you could do that with, with Adaptive. It gives you that, uh, uh, an added benefit often, you know, as auditors are looking where that number came from, you have an audit trail and it, it shows you changes and who tracked it, who did it, and it really provides you that ability to have a forecast that accounts for all your drivers and the impact on growth. And more importantly, to getting beyond the numbers, the simple drill down into what happened and, and why, not just you know, how this happened. You know, getting you into the, the details is, is very, very important. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, well, I think we're gonna show you a, a demonstration on the manufacturing side, um, but I have uh, quite a bit of experience with uh, some real-time use cases in healthcare manufacturing and, and others. And the idea is you, you need to have a plan that plans for revenue and expenses in real time and factors in all of the compelling events and having a transition plan, a what if plan, a scenario that counts for various different uh, models, if you will, but best case, worst case, different, different, uh, different targets that allow you to kind of do that and allow you in the, on the healthcare side, working with them, some customers that are doing cost center based on last month's actuals rather than waiting until it's a quarterly, it's, it's an annual, it's biannual, it's no longer, um, no longer valid. Manufacturer, you know, being able to, to model based on real time demand and cut in SKUs, and thousands and thousands of SKUs, think about what goes into meeting those production goals. Uh, this particular company was looking to move, this was a, recently but they were looking even when i first started working with them in my past to move away from the china manufacturing and get other facilities set up and were able to put everything into a model in adaptive and model out their complete business you know down to inventory levels and collections and pulling pulling that all into your decisions that are going to drive your business and what we're going to what we're going to show you today uh is is scenario planning modeling and, and what what that means there is no limit on the number of models or number of scenarios that that adaptive, unlike some other solutions, um, might suggest. You know, maybe one, maybe three. We certainly adhere to prioritize. Maybe pick a top three or top five, but you want to model everything and have a contingency based on what's potential could happen. And you'll see in in the demo and and after the demo, how, you know, that's that's very very important. So. What's going to happen, you get the top line with your demand and collections and with the market forces that are driving business. What, how do we react on the expense side? Workforce, OPEX, CAPEX, and then wh where does it all net out on the bottom line with cash and margins and financials? Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lynn uh, Wilson, to introduce you to Chris Cahill. Lynn, take it away. Thanks, Rich. Well, I'm Lynn Wilson Jenkins, one of the co-managers of the BSP Adaptive Practice, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to Chris Cahill, EVP of Finance at Unified Enterprises in New York City. I've known Chris since last summer when I first came to BSP when they were winding down their adaptive implementation project. What struck me about Chris is that he's very forward-thinking and he appreciates how technology can streamline his processes and improve efficiency and accuracy across the board. Whenever we talk, Chris is always enthusiastic about adaptive and shares something new that he's done with a report, dashboard, or some scenario planning as he anticipates and stays one step ahead with what's next with Unified. Now I'm going to bring back our Chief Marketing Officer, Craig Cook, for a candid conversation with Chris about how he is leveraging active planning at Unified during these complex and uncertain times. Introducing our adaptive ambassador, Chris Cahill. Now, take it away, Craig. All right, thanks so much. We're gonna uh, transition here from the screen share 
to some video so Chris and I can can talk face to face. Hey, Chris, how's it going? All right. How's it going, Craig? It's great to be with you. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're doing good here. We, we, we're all facing uh, right now uh, significant challenges. Uh, I think you're sitting at your house. I'm sitting at my house. Uh, we're all working remotely. We're all trying to figure out uh, how to, you know, get over the hump of what's going on in our current economic uh, climate. Um, but whether or not we're talking about, you know, COVID-19 and what's happening today, I, I think that the reason why we wanted to talk to you and, and kind of make this about planning during uncertainty and not necessarily about this specific event mm -hmm. is that this is just a, a prime example of the types of events that we can expect to disrupt business today and in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So I think let's, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. Second, let's uh, expand upon the wonderful introduction that Lynn gave you um, and her relationship. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and a little bit more about what you do at Unified? Sure thing, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Uh, so I'm the Executive Vice President for Finance at Unified Enterprises Corp. Uh, I'm responsible for accounting, uh, FP&A, budgeting, forecasting, treasury, internal controls, uh, all the things that a finance leader at a small to medium-sized business would normally be responsible for. Um, we, um, when I started at Unified three years ago, we were using Excel extensively, um, not only for our budgeting and forecasting, but for other types of modeling and um, just for, for pretty much everything. Um, and I immediately realized that that wasn't a long-term solution. So I uh, began to uh, make some changes. Um, but I want to stop there and uh, thank you so much, Lynn, for that wonderful in introduction before I forgot. That was really, really nice. Um, and I would like to say that it's been a pleasure working with you, Lynn, uh, since we've met. So thank you. Um, and uh, I promised our marketing person at Unified, I would just do a quick hit. So let me just say, uh, tell you a little bit about Unified. Uh, we're a technology enabled services company that helps marketers make informed and impactful decisions through their business intelligence platform, uh, our business intelligence platform that is designed for, uh, specifically for social advertising. We provide Fortune 2000 brands and agencies greater transparency into their teams, tools, and strategies. Uh, some of the, our customers are Starbucks, Home Depot, Toyota, Lexus, Stars, Honda, Mercedes, and others. Um, the unified platform and service teams are specifically built to ensure data quality, optimize investments, and answer critical business questions. We have offices in New York, LA, and Atlanta. Uh, I that, promised I, I would I, do that. <laughs> I ha as, the, as the marketer for our team, I have to say thank you for, for, uh, for getting that out there. Absolutely. Um, all right. So... Great background. Um, I give some context to our, our viewers today and mm -hmm. uh, our evergreen viewers when this goes out on YouTube and such. But mm -hmm. uh, here, here's the, the big question. When did you start thinking about what 2020 was going to look like mm -hmm. um, uh, with everything that's going on today? Like, was there a moment where you said, it's time for me to do things a little bit differently so that I can address what I think will be the challenge tomorrow? Yeah, great question. So um, the date was January 8th. Uh, I started immediately started doing a new forecast for uh, 2020. And uh, it wasn't because uh, I was closely monitoring things in China or because I ha was um, had a premonition or anything like that. I just thought that was the right thing to do. Um, and um, Candidly, part of the reason I started doing a rolling reforecast is um, I knew how uh, powerful adaptive is, and I wanted to lean in on that immediately. Uh, and I, I felt that um, you know I was told by our senior executives and uh, like don't don't bother doing a rolling reforecast. Just got the budget approved. Everybody feels good. Let's just you know rock and roll with our BBAs and everything's going to be fine. But I, I felt like even if it was just going to be for me, uh, a rolling reforecast would be important. Uh, so I, I remember I called it a two plus 10 internal reforecast. Uh, and because I figured that by the time that I was ready to share it, we'd have the February actuals in. 
uh, I was looking out for quite a number of weeks mm -hmm. in terms of the timetable. And um, w ultimately, uh, it was not an internal reforecast. It wound up being shared extensively with our board and investors, uh, given the developments in Q1, particularly in March. And uh, what, what types of developments are we talking about uh, in terms of, you know, your business? What, what were the, the factors that started rapidly changing that, that you needed to understand? I would say in between March 10th and forward, we started seeing certain advertisers start to uh, pull back on spend, um, pull back on some of their, or pause some of their campaigns. Um, I remember when the NCAA tournament was canceled, uh, that impacted certain of our advertisers who were, had advertising campaigns built around that event, that tournament, mm -hmm. um, March Madness, things like that. Um, so we quickly began to assess what that looked like, what that change looked like, uh, because ad spend is uh, definitely one of the critical drivers into our financial modeling. Yeah, so your your ad spend is uh, somebody else's retail product or manufacturing input or, yeah. you know, that, that's your KPI that's really driving the decision making. Right? Absolutely. It's huge. So at, at this time, you know, you, you kind of said, well, I, I wanted to run a rolling reforecast. So I wanted to get ahead of this and understand some planning and scenarios. And so how, how did you exactly lean on adaptive? What were some of the activities that you started engaging in? Uh, the first thing we started to do is um, take a step back and make sure we were focusing on what really matters in terms of the drivers of our business. Um, so you know, we were, and then once we had those, make sure that we had, they hadn't changed. So uh, we talked about ad spend. We focused on that and, and understanding our new revenue forecast based on different ad spend, especially in Q2 and partially in Q3. Uh, without getting into the gory details, uh, but based once we had the revenue, uh, the ad spend and revenue re reforecasted, then we took a, another look at what our cost side looks like uh, and evaluated that. Um, and once we had that, we were able to dig deeper on certain things like office expenses. Nobody's in the office now, so you know it's hard to trim back on other things. Uh, but we were very regimented and had a, a game plan that we carried out. Um, and in terms of, you mentioned scenarios, uh, we, we, I insisted that we do no more than three. I said, it's going to be a base, best, and worse. That's it. If three scenarios is going to be enough for us. And uh, I was able to convince the team that three scenarios were enough. We don't need more than that uh, for, for this, this type of business, this size business. Um, uh, and then, you know, we iterated a number of times. Uh, Adaptive makes it very easy to iterate. Um, and we were able to move quickly and get, you know, results, outputs immediately uh, without delay. Uh, and I had a lot of confidence in our models personally because I didn't have to worry about, oh, was there an error in the formula, things like that. I, that, that important and I, we do validation checks but when we used to use Excel inevitably we'd have errors and formulas and things like that which uh, kept me up at night. Yeah I'm sure the, the one fat finger uh, error just yeah. throws off uh, an entire week when you're preparing to make a presentation or something right? It does. Uh, so I'm definitely seeing how adaptive has helped and, and, and you're leveraging the platform. Can you paint a picture for us of what this process would look like if you didn't have adaptive? Um, yeah, it's, I don't like to think about that, but I will. <laughs> um, we, we probably would have taken a lot more time just compiling data. Um, and it would have been a lot harder to get, uh, collaboration from key executives in real time. Um, I think that when we used to use Excel, one of the problems was we'd spend so much time compiling that we would not have time to ask questions and step back and actually analyze the data before we went back to executives with outputs. Um, and uh, one thing that I, I did, I, we, we, one spot we probably would have been in also if we had been using uh, Excel uh, would have been, we would have done the PL and then we would have taken 
a day, two, or whatever, three days to do the balance sheet and the and finish the cash flow forecast, and then come back and say, well, there's a problem with cash flow now. The cash balance is based on the PL. That never happens with adaptive because all three statements, all three outputs are updated immediately, which is something that I love. Yeah, um, that interconnected, you know, nature of the data having one source and then being poured it out to those reports. It's like yeah. all of a sudden I'm, I make a change. I pull a lever yeah. and I see its effect across everything. Right? Yeah. 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 It's integrated, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, that, that makes a huge difference for a small team uh, to have that kind of power is really important. So you're not spending your time compiling data. You're not spending your time validating data. You, you have trust in the numbers so what do you spend your time doing now that, that those activities aren't on the table? So I spend my, a lot more of my time with our CEO, actually strategizing uh, and telling the story underneath the numbers, whether it be um, month to month or looking out, understanding what's driving the numbers and being more thoughtful about um, how we're using our drivers and being, being able to be more, much more strategic than ever before. I think those are all very, very important things. Uh, not in, only in terms of how effective I can be as an executive, but also for career progression, that's important too. Absolutely. All right, so your, your marketing department got their message in. Uh, allow me the same. Um, Chris, how did, how did we, how did Business Solution Partners help in, in this? Absolutely. Um, so we would definitely not be where we are today in adaptive without BSP. Um, you guys did a fantastic job on our implementation. And um, after we finished the implementation, uh, we continued the journey with BSP, identifying what, what do you want to do next? What can we improve? Uh, what does it look like to use adaptive for the 2020 budgeting process? Uh, things like that. And, uh, BSP, uh, I'm going to put a plug in for Barry Blaine. Uh, he's been fantastic. Uh, really enjoy working with Barry. Not only is, is he an expert in adaptive black belt uh, kung fu master, uh, but also a great guy uh, to work with. Uh, really enjoy working with him and learning from him. Um, so I would say we would not be anywhere close to where we are today without BSP. Well, I'll tell you, Barry's on the call today, so you, that that Good. message hit home. I'm sure. Good. Thanks, Barry, um, and thank you. That yeah. you know, I think it's important that these tools are out there. We've, as an organization, we've selected Adaptive Insights because we have a lot of faith in it, and we get a lot of great feedback from our clients who deploy it. Um, so, I uh, before we close up, I just want to say, you know, to you, thank you. There, there's a lot going on right now. We really appreciate you taking the time. You know, for our attendees, not only did Chris take the time today, but there was some prep for this. We, we talked a few times. There were emails back and forth. He really, during this time, he put in a lot of effort for us. So we want to say thank you. Absolutely. Um, and Chris, I think we'll, we'll button up this conversation today. Uh, I'd like to ask you for all the accountants and all the finance executives that are on the call today, what's your best advice for your colleagues in, in times like this? Um, I would say that be as proactive as you can uh, and, and try not to be going to a reactive mode. Um, try to do everything that you can to uh, think ahead. Um, I would say also, um, even at times like this, it's okay to um, have the courage to continue to build out your adaptive uh, or whatever planning tool you're using to improve it, uh, that's, that's, that's okay. I mean, and that's something that I've made sure to force on my team, me and my team. Um, I haven't really had to force it, but that's mm -hmm. the wrong word. I think just be courageous, I think. Um, and I would say, um, yeah, I would, you know, have the courage to take chances and improve your model. Um, but be as proactive as you can. Well, that is the watchword for today, right? Um, proactivity. Um, I think that uh, a lot of our audience today is feeling the pressure to be proactive. 
Um, I hope that part of this conversation will help. Part of what we're going to show next in the demo can help. Um, we're going to put some of uh, we're going to put some context again to what Chris has introduced to us by introducing another Chris. Uh, that's uh, BSP's Chris Adamski. Um, so for now, I'm going to I'm going to say goodbye. But Chris, you're going to join us uh, at the end uh, again for our Q and A session. Um, so good. if any of our attendees have any questions for Chris, uh, stick around. We're going to we're going to bring him back. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Chris Adamski. Uh, Chris is our Adaptive Insights Practice Manager, um, and he is going to uh, take us behind the scenes and go under the hood so that we can uh, understand and put some context to what Chris was describing in terms of scenarios and planning and modeling. Uh, Chris, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Craig. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Craig mentioned, I am Chris Adamski, one of the Adaptive Practice Managers here at BSP. Uh, I have to say, as someone who's done a ton of implementations, it's, it's always great to hear about all the ways people are using Adaptive in, in different ways. Uh, so thank you again so much for, for that, Chris. Um, so to take things a, a little bit further, um, and if you've listened in on any of our other Adaptive uh, webinars, you already know that everybody plans. On top of that, everybody plans for uncertainties, or at least we should. And, and we know the topic of planning for uncertainties is super important, especially in today's world. Whether it's planning for upswings or downswings, there are always things we don't know. We sure don't know how long an external factor might affect us, nor do we know exactly how much of an impact it'll, it'll have. But at the same time, we do, do, we do actually know a few things. We know these things are actually unpredictable, obviously, um, but we also know uh, what information we do have now. And we also know that we had a, a baseline plan. And using this knowledge and our tools, we could build upon that baseline and plan for any given scenario. So today we're gonna to show you how this can be done in Adaptive. Uh, along the way, you're, you're gonna see how Adaptive's comprehensive solution allows us to be agile and quickly adjust to change and unpredictability. So what I wanna show you today is how I could plan quickly for two new scenarios given some information I may or may not have. So in the first scenario, I've asked my budget owners to revise and submit their budgets to plan for a worst case scenario. So likely they will have removed their plan new hires for later this year. Um, and they probably made a, a few other uh, expense adjustments along the way. And more specifically, what I'll focus in on today in this scenario is, is my sales data. I want to see what my sales manager, Sam, has done to his, his, his plan. So I had all of them do this in a new version that was created earlier. Uh, and then in the second scenario today, I wanted to make another copy of my current budget and plan a best case or better case scenario that involves planning for an unforeseen positive impact to our business in light of current events. So in this version, in this version I'm going to make some top level adjustments and see how that affects my overall plan. And then to wrap things up a little later, uh, we're, we're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison look at both of these versions uh, together against my baseline plan. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So Craig, I'm going to steal this screen share from you. Absolutely. And get into Adaptive here. And hopefully everybody can see that. So when I log in, I get dropped into my dashboards. I've set that as my home page. And um, uh, what I want to do is, is navigate over to my workflow area to see what's been done so far. Um, because I, I'm told that my uh, sales manager, Sam, has made some changes to his budget and has submitted that for my review. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. So through my main menu here, I'm going to go down into workflow. And in here, if, if I look at the level section here, I could already see something light up here. I can see my sales level and see all the sub-levels underneath it. And it looks like Sam's already been up to something in here, and it looks like he's already submitted that for review. Now let's take a look at a little bit of the detail here. So if I click on his sales roll up here, I can see on the right hand side, he's entered in some notes. Uh, it looks like he's made a reduction in the sales force uh, over the year, and also made a 50% reduction in the sales units uh, from, from April for the rest of the fiscal year. So that's all well and good. That's what he says here. He's uh, submitted his budget uh, for my review. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and dive in and, and take a look at what he's done. 
So let's uh, let's start by taking a look at some some dashboards again in in in, in real time and look at the big picture of what he's he's done so far and compare that to our baseline budget. So if I na navigate over to my dashboards into my company summary, I'm dropped into my first tab here, my scenario planning dashboard. So in this first chart, I've laid out our baseline plan here in green. The line here is, is, are, are my gross sales while the columns are our expenses. And the orange data is my negative plan version data. How cool is it to be able to see all my negative plan version data and my current baseline plan data in, in one uh, dashboard here? Um, and what's really cool about this is I could hover over any of these here and see the underlying values in real time. And if I wanted to, if I'm having a conversation with my board in, in real time, we could have that discussion about the data behind the scenes because I could also click on any one of these and drill into any one of the lower, uh, lower level uh, elements that make up this data, like, like vendor information, our, our product sales, um, or even sales by, by region or level. Uh, whatever the case is, we, we, we can drill into that data live from this, this uh, dashboard here. And the second chart here is a scorecard that will show me a comparison of my month, quarter, and year values between our, our, our baseline budget and our negative uh, impact budget that we've created earlier and that Sam has, has already gone in and, and, and updated. We could also see a variance for these different time periods. So for a month, we see our, our budget our negative uh, impact and our variance, along with a quarter section here that shows us the quarter roll up for, for this time period that I'm selected on, and for the whole year as well. And I could actually go up here and change my time period and see what's going on later in the year. So let's just select August. And in real time, my month section here has changed to August 2020 between the budget and negative impact. It shows me a real time variance and it shows me the quarter data for that, that month as well. So I'm seeing Q3 data um, and the year is a year. So this is great. This is exactly what I was, what I was looking for. Real time, uh, high level data, uh, a, a high level look at, at our uh, uh, company performance here for the rest of the year given our scenarios. So uh, let's take this a, a, a little further and, and look at the data in another way. So let's go look at reports. We're gonna navigate through my main menu and go into reports here. So I already have a, a, a report created or a couple of reports created. One's called uh, scenario variances. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that one up. And this is just a simple PNL statement that shows me quickly what we're planning on doing this year uh, given the two scenarios. So you can see here, I have my negative impact version that I've created off my current budget. And this negative impact is, is again, the one that, that Sam has already uh, updated for his uh, reduction in, in sales over the year. So we can see a quarter, uh, Q1, Q2, three, and so on, um, and a total fiscal year 2020 values uh, all in one report between the negative and the current budget impact, uh, or the negative impact and our current baseline budget. And we also have another report here that will show us the variance between our current budget and our negative impact. And we can see that for each quarter and again for the, the whole year. So this, along with my dashboard, is starting to tell me a story that sets me up to make better decisions very quickly uh, and report what I know uh, to, to my board. All while probably saving me uh, at least two or three meetings while uh, you know, everybody sits around and talks about an Excel spreadsheet and makes updates and consolidates and all that good stuff. Um, all I did is I, I asked Sam to make changes to his, his budget, submit that for my approval, and uh, uh, here it all is right in front of my eyes. Um, but before we move on to another scenario and create a whole other version and stuff, let's, let's go ahead and play around with our fourth quarter sales right in this version because I think one of our products might, might actually experience an, an uptick in sales actually. So let's make a quick adjustment to our sales and see what that looks like. But I know that Sam submitted his scenario uh, back in workflow. And what that does is this is by, by design. It, the system is gonna lock down um, uh, any changes to his levels because he's already submitted it and uh, it's, it's already out for, for approval. So the system doesn't want to allow for any additional changes after that fact. So what I'm gonna do is, even though I really wanna make changes, 
I can't unless I'm going to uh, go in here. I'll just go ahead and, and reject the whole level tree for for that. So I could go in and, and manipulate his budget, hopefully with his his uh, his blessing. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is now that I am able to make changes to his his version's levels here or his, his sales department, uh, let's go ahead and navigate back to dashboards. You might be wondering, well, why the heck are you going back to dashboards? I thought you were going to change some data. Well, one of the really cool things about uh, adaptive dashboard feature is the concept of active dashboards. Um, and in, in this feature, I can actually display a sheet in here and actually make changes on the fly and see real-time updates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to go into my U.S. sales level here. And in here, that sheet now is, is open up to me to be able to make changes. And I can see um, our, our whole fiscal year product A, B, and Z uh, uh, units uh, to be sold uh, over, over the year. And so what I'm, all I want to do is I'm going to just change product A. Perhaps that's our hand sanitizer line, and that's obviously seeing a big boom right now. Um, but uh, just for the sake of discussion, I'm going to just manipulate uh, the third quarter, October, November, and December of 2020. So I'm going to bump this up to 3,500. I'm going to right click and I'm going to, I'm going to copy forward on this. And I just want to copy forward to the end of the year. So that's just going to change October, November, December, and then not change anything else for the rest of the, uh, the plan version that was already set to 35. So um, you can see when, when I do make a change in one of these sheets, the data turns to blue indicating that I have unsaved changes. So let's go ahead and save that right from the dashboard. And as I do, you can see that the dashboards, all these dials up here automatically changed in real time on the fly. Um, so let's, let's, let's take a, a, all of this one step further um, and, and just create a whole new scenario version that shows uh, just an overall general positive impact uh, to our plan through the whole year. So I'm gonna go into modeling. I'm gonna go into versions. So we already had a negative impact version created and people have already been in there adjusting and submitting their plans. All I want to do is create one more, one more scenario version here where I can make just my own what if story. And in this version, um, I'll be planning a general upswing in sales for the whole year. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new version here. And I'm going to call this positive impact. I'm going to leave all the defaults here. So what we're looking at here is just the, the version setting. So I can manipulate the, the time span settings or, or anything here to overlay actuals on top of my plan for any given periods that I do have completed actuals for. But more importantly here, since I really want just a mirror image copy of my current baseline budget, I'm gonna start this version as a copy of my current budget, which is my baseline plan. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and copy all the data over and all the shared formulas. And I know that when I do this, it's gonna give me a mirror image copy of that uh, original budget. So I'm gonna leave all those defaults there. So I'm gonna hit save. And I've got it nicely tucked away in my what if scenarios folder here to, um, uh, to kind of keep it aside, uh, away from all my other real stuff that's going on. Um, so after that is, is done, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, a, at an income statement. Now in here, I want to go ahead and flip over to that new positive impact version. It's already there in my version uh, selector. And I'm already on the sales US level. So I want to look at some of the data in there. And since I'm in that leaf level, uh, I can see all of my planning data that my uh, uh, manager, Sam, has, has already entered. You can see some values here are manually entered. You can see some values here with a blue corner, which indicates that these are formula-driven values. Perhaps uh, in, this, in this particular case, uh, account 6070 is coming straight from my personnel model. Um, and more specifically up here, our 4010 account is coming from a, a sheet uh, that we've already manipulated earlier in, in the dashboard. It's the, the sales sheet. Um, and this is formulated directly from that sheet. But what's even cooler is I have the ability to uh, update this line 
without messing around with anything that the sales team and ops team have already planned for. I could leave all their data alone and I was given the ability to model my own top line adjustments over this, uh, uh, over this value here in my own sheet. Again, to keep all their data alone, uh, uh, all, all their data off to the side as it was without messing around with that. And I could do that in my um, revenue scenario planner sheet. And again, in this sheet, I want to make sure that I'm in the right version. And I'm going to navigate to the right level that I want to manipulate here. My sales US level. And it's empty right now. I don't have any other scenar any scenarios yet. But I'm going to go ahead and create one line here. And I'm just going to call this scenario one. We won't worry about that, what that's for exactly right now. Um, but in this sheet, I am given the ability to either uh, adjust the that revenue line um, with, by either a percent or a value adjustment. So if I just wanted to make a quick five thousand uh, uh, dollar uptick in sales for one month, I could do that here by selecting value and putting in a, a value in time span. For this particular case, I'm going to select percent and scroll over to the right um, uh, time span area here for April. And for April, I'm going to start with, uh, let's just say a 5% uh, uptick in sales for that quarter. Uh, let's do 10 for the third quarter and we'll do 15 for uh, Q4. And since I'm on the right uh, uh, level and right version here, let me go ahead and click save on that. And once I do, um, I could go straight over to my, my income statement, refresh that, I know nobody here uh, memorizes those, those numbers, but uh, we will be able to see uh, a slight uptick for uh, uh, second quarter, a little bit more for third, and a 15% increase in, in um, uh, the fourth quarter here. So that's cool. That's a healthy increase uh, in, in our revenue here. Let's see how this compares to our baseline and our negative plan. So let's go back to dashboards. And without having to do anything else other than just create that version, modify some, some data, I'm already on that positive impact version here. And my, my dashboards have, have already changed to show me that, um, that version. So again, we see that baseline plan data in green, both the gross sales and the expenses and the comms, but we also see the orange base, uh, the orange positive impact plan gross sales and its uh, corresponding uh, expenses. Uh, same for our scorecard here, that, that has changed to show me that positive impact plan for month, quarter, and year. So let's um, uh, look at this in, in a different way. So of course I could go in here and real time change our version from positive net, uh, impact to negative impact and see that updates uh, on the fly. That's pretty cool. So um, let's put it back to positive impact for now. And I'm gonna navigate over to reports because I wanna see, again, this data in, in a slightly different light and see it, see it in a report. So in a scenario variances report that I've created earlier, uh, we still see the negative impact in current budget, but what if I wanted to see all three together in, in one report? I could do that very quickly and modify this report, go into versions and peel out or pick out that positive impact click and drag it over here. And I'm a very visual person, so we're gonna show all three all at once here. And I'm gonna hit run. And I can see all three of those versions side by side for the whole year, uh, separated by, or grouped by quarter and total fiscal year at the end. Similarly, I could go back into my scenario with variances and without having done anything, our positive impact is already in our selector list here. And I could update this report to show that positive impact and its variances throughout the year. So as you can see, um, I, was, I was able to review a submitted budget, look at its overall impact to our bottom line, and compare it to our baseline plan. Then I was able to very quickly create a new version of my baseline to go a whole other direction with this and say, hey, look, what if, what if, there's a, what if there is a positive impact to us? What does that look like? And how does that look compared to the other two? By having all this in one solution without any coding or help desk tickets or anything like that, I could create my own reports and make collaborative decisions extremely quickly and write my own conclusions to these stories. 
So that about wraps it up. Um, thank you so much for being here today. I really hope you enjoyed this, this demo. If, if you have any other questions or want to explore more with us, feel free to reach out directly to any one of us here at BSB. Um, with that, have a great rest of your day. And at this point, um, I think I'm handing things back over to Rich. So Rich, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. So I, we showed you a lot in a little bit of time. Um, yeah, hopefully the the concept of being able to plan budget forecast report from a single platform was clear. Um, just talk real quickly about where we are in the world today and you know how some key takeaways as you start thinking about recovery, because that's the phase we're in now. How long is it going to take us to recover? As we've said, it, the annual plan's not not going to cut it anymore. You need to be more dynamic with the active dashboards. And I share a customer story about someone who has a daily business and they plan materials and it's a dental business, hundreds of facilities. And with Adaptive, they spun up two or three different scenarios, brought it to the board and said, here's, here's what we have in play, two or three different scenarios based on different market factors. And it was a game changer for them. They stayed in business. They've actually grown their business in, in some areas where they were able to identify potential growth for some of their competitors who, were, who, who shut down. So think, think about how this would impact your business. Um, don't be afraid to, to use Adaptive. Uh, reach out to us so we can show you more about how you could use Adaptive to model anything. Um, as, and as Chris Cahill said, you know, with, with the idea of prioritizing the top three best uh, base, a best and a worst case, uh, and then, you know, this, the, the last slide is really an eye chart and we're going to send it, send this out, but it's just some recommendations we have around, you know, being able to plan for any and all uh, future you know, change because it, it is inevitable. It will, it will happen. Uh, and we're, we're here to help. So with that, we'll open it up to Q and a, um, Craig, there's anybody who would like to, uh, uh, there's a closing poll here. So thank you. Yeah, we got our closing poll up and we are now open for Q and a, Please locate the Q&A function on your Zoom interface and submit your questions about budgeting and forecasting to our panel of experts. Uh, sorry, budgeting and forecasting, that's an old script about <laughs> scenario planning uh, and what we've talked about today in terms of uh, uncertainty. Um, I have a couple of questions coming in. Let me see, who should take this one? Uh, How about, uh, let's bring Chris Adamski back um, for a question from the audience. How real time is the actuals data? Uh, do actu how do actuals get into the system? I think that's actually two questions. Yeah, good, good question. So uh, to answer the first one, how real time, it's as real time as your business requirements uh, require them to be. Um, except for minute, minute by minute kind of thing. Um, we could go hourly, uh, daily, weekly, and monthly for the actuals import and automate that. Um, and then uh, how do actuals get in? There are two methods. Generally, um, uh, the first and, and easiest by far is just a flat file import from your ERP system. Uh, once all the mapping and everything is, is done, there, there are templates that Adaptive provides from the system itself that you could massage your data into. And it's literally uh, maybe a a uh, minute and a half uh, activity to, to import that data. And the other, the other way is using our, our um, uh, design integrations tool, which is the enhanced integration that connects adaptive uh, directly with your ERP system. And that's fully automated. So uh, just want to poll the audience here. If you would like to raise your hand in the, in the interface, if you'd like to use the Q&A, now is the time to ask your questions. Doesn't look like we have any more questions. I'm gonna give it a, a little bit more time. Uh, I will like to take a moment at this time to say on behalf of today's webinar team, uh, myself, Rich DePalma, Lynn Jenkins, Chris Cahill, Chris Adamski, and Michelle Cronley, thank you so much for your attendance today. Uh, do remember Chris is here, uh, Cahill from Unified, if you wanna ask him any direct questions, or if you wanna ask any questions of our practice managers uh, or our account executive. Uh, we're going to leave this open for just another minute. Let's see if any questions roll in. All right. So if you would like any additional information about planning, 
about adaptive insights, about running scenarios, or how business solution partners can help your company uh, make it through these trying times, uh, we are always here to help you. Our, our corporate headquarters is in Roslyn, New York, just outside of Manhattan, uh, but we now have local offices. I think it's 15 locations uh, in California, in Montana, uh, Chicago, uh, Virginia. Um, please visit our website for more information. We are your global software consultancy with a local presence in your backyard, and we're happy to support you. On behalf of my whole team, thank you for your attendance today, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Uh, have a great day.